This week in gaming news, Bungie splits from Activision causing their stock to plummet, Soldier Boy releases a new handheld system, hackers find Super Nintendo games on the Switch, and Microsoft talks about the future tech. That and much more coming up on the DLC. Hello and welcome to the DLC where we talk about news in the gaming world throughout the week. My name is Neil and we have a lot to talk about today, so let's dive on in. Earlier this week, Soldier Boy decided he wasn't out of the console race just yet. After having to take his knockoff consoles down from his website several weeks ago for selling ROMs, Soldier Boy has put up a new handheld system that looks shockingly similar to Sony's own PlayStation Vita. Soldier Boy is selling this handheld currently for $99, marked down from $200. But just like his other consoles, you can find the exact same device on AliExpress for only $29. Soldier Boy has even gone as far as copying the description word for word. This guy is so lazy he can't even come up with his own unique description for his devices. While this device doesn't say it comes with any ROMs pre-installed, it's more than likely there are indeed ROMs that come pre-loaded. There hasn't been any word from Sony on whether or not they're going to step in as the recording of this video. As a reminder, somebody found in violation of the Trademark Counterfeiting Act could receive up to 10 years in jail on the first offense and up to 20 years for their second. The most shocking thing about this whole incident is despite being proven that he's not only taking somebody else's device, raising the price nearly 400%, calling it his own, being threatened by Nintendo, and being forced to remove the devices from his website, this new handheld system has already sold out. Well, according to Soldier Boy's website. People, you're getting robbed. He's ripping you off. Soldier Boy has also released a cheaper device that only costs $28 and more than likely plays the exact same games as the more expensive one. But surprise, surprise, you can also find this one on AliExpress, this time for only $13. He's still ripping you off. Come on, guys. Soldier Boy is kind of like one of those guys that you find in an alleyway selling those knockoff Rolexes. Right? You know that they're fake, but he insists that they're the real deal. Right? If you buy one, you've been done duped. Quick little update. Uh, while I was editing this video, I took a look at Soldier Boy's website just to make sure I had my details right, and it's down. Um, so nothing on his website actually works. Um, I did some digging around. Apparently he's claiming that it was an ex-cameraman hacked his website. Come on, Soldier Boy. Who are you kidding here? Um, so could this be the end of Soldier Boy and his enterprise? Who knows? We'll see. On January 8th, Xbox Wire Editor-in-Chief Will Tuttle released a blog update talking about the previous year's performance and what to expect for the future of Xbox. The article showcases some highlights, mainly being Xbox's Game Pass edition of over 116 titles, as well as 87 of those titles being rated E to E10, highlighting Game Pass as a family-friendly service. Tuttle also commented on how they worked with Epic Games to connect over 78 million Fortnite players across all platforms, meaning that Xbox, Nintendo, PC, and yes, even PlayStation 4 players can all play Fortnite together. Lastly, the article talks about bringing more exclusives to the console this year with Gears 5, Minecraft Dungeons, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and Crackdown 3, that long-awaited game we've all wanted. He also mentions that they're going to try and make first-party games available on day one for Game Pass, as well as make Game Pass available on your PC to play Xbox exclusives. This new feature will make it available for you to play any Xbox game found on Game Pass on your PC, much like Sony's PlayStation Now. The article leaves off teasing that they are working on some new technology and exclusives to turn players into loyal Xbox fans. Could this be a turnaround for Xbox this year? Some people say it's too little too late, while others are excited to see Xbox thrive. Since this year's only started off, we'll just have to wait and see. Speaking of cross-platform, Rocket League can now be played across PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. That's right, if you've been playing Rocket League online already, you've probably been playing against players on a different platform. On January 14th, Rocket League announced on their website that Sony has finally decided to join the cross-platform party with Rocket League's online matchmaking. In the past, Sony has not allowed cross-play for its games, aside from very select few titles like Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV. Sony claimed that they were the best console to play games and didn't want to open up the possibility to losing players to other platforms. So, why now? Many people are asking. Well, it could be because the PlayStation 4 has just sold over 90 million consoles. Sony might have decided that it's no longer an issue. Opening up cross-platform is huge as sometimes a game's online play dies down on one console while it thrives on another. This means no matter the size of your community, you can always play online with active players. This could also allow you to carry your progression over to another platform so that you can keep your level wherever you are. 
With Sony now allowing both Fortnite and Rocket League crossplay, what other games could Sony potentially look to enable this feature on? Some fans are hoping for Minecraft next, but time will only tell. Hackers have recently hacked into the Nintendo Switch to reveal several SNES games in four separate emulators attached to Nintendo's online service. Two of the four emulators are recognizable for being NES and SNES emulators, while the other two are shrouded in mystery. This is leaving many fans to speculate that not only are we going to be getting the SNES added to Nintendo's online service, but we might also be getting the N64 and even GameCube down the line. Of the games that have been discovered, several of them were included on the SNES Classic, which could leave some fans wondering why they even bothered to purchase it to begin with. I mean, other than to have the cool miniature console on your armoire or entertainment system, whatever you call it. In a similar vein, some hackers dove into the PlayStation Classic and revealed that there were some games that might have initially been thought to have been included, only later to be removed, possibly due to licensing issues? I mean, we'll never really know. A full list of the games discovered for Nintendo can be found in a link down in the description. Well, Bungie and Activision have decided that they're getting a divorce. That's right, according to an article posted by PC Gamer earlier this week, Activision came out and said that the split was in part caused by Destiny 2's Forsaken expansion not performing as well as they had expected. In the article, they quoted Destiny's game director Luke Smith saying, We are not disappointed with Forsaken. We set out to build a game that Destiny players would love, and at Bungie, we love it too. Activision also stated that they are letting Bungie keep Destiny and giving them all the rights to continue the Destiny IP. PC Gamer also quoted Activision saying, Going forward, Bungie will own and develop the franchise, and Activision will increase its focus on owned IPs and other projects. Not too long after making this announcement, Activision's stock dropped by nearly half its worth. Before the announcement, Activision's stock was resting at about 80 points, and as of the recording in this video, is now worth about 47 points. Meaning that investors aren't too happy with the split. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Destiny has around 900,000 active players that could all be making them a lot of money. Come on, Activision, what are you thinking? Bungie has thanked Activision for a successful eight-year run during their partnership, and who would blame them? Destiny has a thriving community. With Bungie keeping all the rights to Destiny, they'll have complete creative freedom to develop content as there's one less hand in the pot. This leaves fans wondering what they will do with this creative control. One can only hope good things. Well, that concludes this week's update. If you like this video, consider subscribing and make sure you click that bell so you can be notified of the next update. And tell us what you think of the stories down in the comments below. Is Sony going to jump in like Nintendo and take action against Soldier Boy? Are you excited to start playing against players on other platforms in Rocket League? What do you think Microsoft means by new technologies? Finally, if you want to help support this channel, check out this channel's Patreon as any support is greatly appreciated and we want to continue to make amazing content for you. If you'd like to learn more about any of these week's stories and check sources, all the links are down in the description. You've been watching the DLC. My name is Neil and as always, keep it classy.